I want to talk about supplements. And again, something that you inspired me with was the talk about creatine. And I started taking creatine, but I got, not saying this is not right, but someone was like, oh, you know, take two teaspoons. So I was taking two teaspoons, which was about 10 grams. I have never felt so ill in my life where the nausea was beyond. And I, silly, I didn't really put two and two together. And for three days straight, I took it, felt like I was going to vomit for about three hours of each of those days oh till it really like, I was like, it must be the creatine. And then I was scared to take it for a couple of weeks. But then I just, again, heard you say five grams or less. So I think I'd take, you know, four to five grams now, completely fine. So talk to us about why I would have had that effect and what the right dose is, why creatine is good for you. Yeah, so creatine is used in all the fast energetics of our body. So if we're thinking about the initial ATP, CP, which is your first zero to 20 seconds of energy, the C of the CP is creatine. So it's creatine phosphate. So if we are taking in creatine monohydrate, then we have a greater availability of that creatine to be there for our fast energetics. So if we're thinking about all of the things that we do in a day, we are using so much creatine in all the processes. If we're looking even at brain function, gut function, heart health, all of that requires creatine. So if we are ingesting more creatine, then we have more available. Our liver does produce between two and three grams a day, but we see that by the nature of being women and having less muscle mass, we have less stores than men. And women tend to not eat as much animal protein as men do. So that's another caveat there where we're not ingesting as much as men. So if we're supplementing with it, it takes about three weeks to fully saturate all the tissues in the body. So if we're starting at a lower dose of one and a half to five grams, over the course of three weeks, you'll get a muscle boost, a brain boost, people who have um, gut issues, that's going to start to dissipate. Wow. And we see more people have talked about getting better focus, and that has to do with better brain metabolism as well. And there is a website now, Creatine for Health, that's publishing all the uh, more health-oriented creatine research that's out there from pregnancy to mental health. We see there's a new study that just came out where two five-gram doses a day, morning and evening, help people who have really severe fatigue from low sleep and people who have um, depressive episodes where their their actual pharmaceutical isn't working as well. They wow. can top it up with creatine and it helps get them out of depressive episodes. So it, it is something that has been kind of pushed into the bodybuilding set for so long, but we see that it's so essential for so many different other conditions than just building muscle and having muscle function. Mm. So it's an illusion that people should only take creatine if they're working out or on days that they're working out. Exactly. And part of it also is the fear factor of, of how much you have to take. Because if we look at a typical bodybuilding for muscle function type um, protocol, which is where it all started, we're looking at um, 20 grams a day and five gram doses with carbohydrate. And when we're looking at that, that's when you get the bloating, the discomfort, mm. you really start to put on weight from water retention. And we're like, wait, no, that's when we're looking at, at really swole and, and getting really fantastic muscle performance. And that's a subset. What we want is for health. We want brain function. We want gut function. We want um, to be able to have better muscle function as well, but we don't have to go the high doses. We know mm. that a very small amount is very beneficial, especially for women. So would you say between like three and five grams for women? Yeah. yeah. I tell women they should start with maybe one and a half if they're afraid of supplementing because some yeah. women don't supplement and they're not sure how they're going to react. So if we go one and a half grams for one week and then work up to three grams the next week, and then on the third week, you're starting to get that five gram dose in, then you're slowly accumulating and saturating the body, but you're not overwhelming any one particular system. <laughs> not like what I, I did. Don't nauseous. do what I did. Don't, Don't start off nauseous. doing 10 grams. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, the weight thing. I was going to ask you about that. You've explained it well, because I did hear like some 
talk about um, holding um, weight or more so like, as you said, it it's more um, water retention. But if you're having below five grams, you shouldn't have that effect. No. And part of it also is the protocol of having carbohydrate with it because yes. creatine and carbohydrate will both hold water. Uh, but if you're just having creatine at a lower dose, you don't have that transient water retention. Wow. That's so interesting. I wanted to ask you as well, is there any other supplements, again, especially for women in middle age, that you really recommend that we take? There are two others, um, especially when we're down here in the Southern Hemisphere yeah. and winter is coming. We look at vitamin D, spe mm. specifically vitamin D3. Uh, also, we're in the culture in the summer of slip, slap, slop or we use a lot of sunscreen, we cover up with um, clothes and hats and stuff. So we're not actually getting enough vitamin D from the sun. We can have small times of exposure, but when I say that all the dermatologists and people in derm yell at me, what? No, sunburn, cancer is like a small amount, mm. a little bit of moderate amount is going to help in the summer. But we see how vitamin D is so essential for so many other different functions from building bone, maintaining bone, maintaining muscle, muscle function, brain health, uh, a better lipid profile, iron absorption, keeping our ferritin elevated, like almost all the small molecular things that, that we get concerned about from a clinical scope can be helped with vitamin D3. And then the other one for uh, perimenopause or women in midlife would be omega-3 fatty acids. Because mm. we see that when we are having that perturbation in our estrogen progesterone, that we also have a little bit of disconnect in the inflammatory and anti-inflammatory responses in our cells. So for having more omega-3 fatty acids, it helps with that. It helps with all the breakdown effects in our cells. So we don't have as much oxidative stress that's not being taken care of. And we don't have as much inflammatory responses. So if we can dampen the systemic inflammatory responses, it feeds forward to better lipid profile, less visceral fat, uh, better brain health, uh, better muscle function and muscle accumulation and a reduction in body fat accrual when we're starting mm. to go through perimenopause. That's so interesting. I wanted to talk to you on that about um, skin changes and more to do with like skin elasticity. A lot of women have said to me kind of around midlife, especially maybe after menopause for them, in their 50s, they find like the saggy um, under the arms, saggy uh, knees. If that, if someone has that and it's upsetting them, is there anything you can do to reverse it or also to prevent it? Collagen uh, decreases as we get older. And part of what we're seeing in skin is a decrease in the elastic profile and, and properties of skin and tendons. And it's exasperated by the lack of estrogen because estrogen, again, it works on every system of the body. How do we counter it? There isn't anything really. We know that doing strength training to really develop the muscle and increase blood flow to all parts of the body really does help with that. You can look at using collagen supplementation. It works on an individual basis. So some women will find it's very effective and other women won't. Mm -hmm. And you have to be particular in the type of collagen that you're looking for as well. If we're looking for skin in particular, we want type one and three. But if we start having lots of joint issues and joint pain and soft tissue problems, then we want to look for a type two. So you want to be very specific in what you're looking for, because we'll see women who have issues around um, the knees with skin sagging and, and feeling like, oh, what's going on? They mm. also have inflammatory um, problems happening within the joint of the knee. So if we can take care of both of those with appropriate um, strength training, as well as type two and type three collagen supplementation, it can work really well for some women. At nighttime now, I take a combination of um, collagen and um, magnesium, the powder. It's kind of started because the collagen was so, it's disgusting. Like it stinks like fish. So you can't take it on its own. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I take like a collagen powder as well, which, you know, I don't have problems sleeping, but it's great for that too. And obviously um, for your muscles and all that kind of stuff. Do you take magnesium? What do you think of it? I don't use magnesium. 
if I were, I would look for a magnesium theonate mm -hmm. because that's the only one that crosses blood brain barrier and can actually help with parasympathetic activation, which is what you're wanting for sleep. Um, I use theanine, L-theanine, and uh, sometimes I add in some ashwagandha when I'm traveling or rhodiola when I'm traveling. I really prefer theanine over magnesium because it is a non-protein amino acid that is directly uh, related and influenced by part of the GABA system in our brain. So that's the parasympathetic activation, the processes for that. Um, some people find it gives them focus. So you'll see people taking it during the day, but a lot of people will find that it gives them the enough of the ability to shut the brain from being busy to be able to fall asleep and stay asleep. So that's something that I would kind of preferentially use mm -hmm. or recommend if we can't get magnesium theonate. Wow. That's, that is good to know.